All right, everybody, welcome to the IPFS content routing work group number five. Let me share my screen. Uh, all right, so uh, I'll start out with kind of a description of the purpose of this meeting, as well as the um, kind of top of mind documents that are worth reviewing if you're new to this session. Uh, the purpose of this meeting is to discuss content routing across both the IPFS and Filecoin network uh, as we bridge the gap between the two and um, kind of the design um, design probabilities and outcomes that uh, may result from uh, attempting to cover these bases. And some of the documentation here um, are the more recent design discussions that have been ongoing, as well as some links to important documents relative to this work group. Um, so there is a design decision about reader privacy that uh, we have deployed, but um, across DHT is still um, in implementation. I think we may get some updates about that today. Uh, SID.contact, which is the primary um, content router that we operate here at Protocol Labs, and then um, an async discussion with our leadership regarding our uh, design pathway towards implementing a handful of features relative to content routing, uh, as well as the uh, double hashing the DHT spec that is currently in process. Um, I will say for the next part of the meeting, um, we found the process of having each team perform an update to be really beneficial, but some of those discussions are very, very dense. And so probably for the sake of everyone's best interest and in ensuring that we get uh, all of our topics covered throughout this small section of time that we have, uh, we may time box those updates just a little bit and take a parking lot approach to, you know, potential additional details about updated items that uh, we're going through. Um, but thanks everyone for participating in that exercise. I think it's been helpful. I'll go ahead and start with the interplanetary network indexer updates uh, to give you all some time to kind of catch up with the other stuff. And uh, Masi, please feel free at any time to jump in and uh, let me know if there's some latest and greatest I might've missed. Um, but, um, Leaving our last meeting, we had been discussing a cascading uh, solution for messages from uh, the DHT to allow for lookups across both the interplanetary network indexer and the DHT without having to run a DHT client. Um, and we've deployed that to production and um, we tested it uh, along with uh, a note that um, we've also got CloudFront caching enabled. Um, that's in place. So anybody that wants to take a look at it, I didn't throw the command here, but uh, Mossy threw a little curl together that you can uh, actually test it out if you'd like to. And uh, I'll make a reminder for myself to add that to the notes if you want to give it a shot and see how it works. And then um, we added some refined responses for the NDJSON um, to the IPNI HTTP API. Um, and this optimized for batch finds. So that's a new capability that um, we threw in here um, using multi hashes. And then we also um, have submitted a PR enabling saving advertisements and entries from our data store in the network indexer um, as car files uh, with the ultimate goal of saving advertisement car files to S3. So, uh, you'll have the ability to kind of package up your advertisements um, and compartmentalize them for mobility. Um, so that is the interplanetary network indexer. ProBlab or Bifrost, does, does anybody want to volunteer to jump in and go first? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Keith. Um, so on the ProLab side, so it's been mostly um, two things. So first, the bit swap provider data optimization. So Ian produced a report that I encourage you to visit and review. And um, 
it isn't exactly like we expected. So it's kind of weird because um, we get a worse performance or worse time to first byte when we set the provider search delay of bit swap to zero when compared to uh, one second, which is what we have now for both um, DHT and IPNI. And so I think, so we're still in this investigating, but um, we would notice some strong correlation with uh, the heap usage. And there are some stuff that are a bit suspicious. So we're still looking into it and we don't want to, um, so we want to put uh, the test with Bifrost on hold while we investigate on that. It might be related to some Kubo issues. So we'll, we'll need to see. And um, on the other side, we've been working on the, so the double hash DHT. Um, the spec is out. Um, please have a look, give some feedback, recommendation um, before we validate it. And yeah, let's say lock it. Um, so some stuff isn't still totally defined, such as the data format and the variant. So if you have some strong opinions, um, please write them down. So it's still flexible, so it can still be changed. And uh, the migration plan is still uh, not done. So that's for the spec. And for uh, concerning the implementation, so Chainsafe has been working on the implementation and also on evaluating their implementation. And they just gave us a report um, last week. And it was disappointing. We couldn't get the information we we're looking from. And, so it's, we, we cannot really use it as it is. And so we need to maybe reframe the collaboration or see with them, um, yeah, how, how, the, how we should go on with, with the testing. So uh, this also uh, is delayed. And yeah, so that was mostly what we've been working on. Sounds like you've been working hard, Yi. Um, and I did not forget, we owe you an update. I'm hoping to bring that to group discussion as one of our topics for the priority for kind of um, uh, some of the stuff that we were talking about last week. So uh, we'll, we'll keep that on the table. That'll come back up in a little bit. Um, yep. Does anybody from IPFS or Bifrost want to jump in and let us know the, the latest and greatest? There's nothing much really to update on our side, but at least for in this particular group. Uh, so yeah, we've been dealing with various miscellaneous stuff, but nothing to take people's times here. Well, thanks, Mara. We'll uh, we'll jump to IPFS. Yeah, I just uh, dropped a short comment that we are working on. Uh, Bifrost Gateway binary, which is replacement for full-blown Kubo. Uh, it does not have uh, goalie P2P at all, and it delegates all the IPFS things to remote uh, backend, which provides blocks on cars. Um, and mentioning here, because uh, that backend uh, for the time being will be Falcon Saturn, and Falcon Saturn will most likely use delegated uh, content routing over HTTP. So we'll be dogfooding it by a proxy that way, I guess. That's good to bring out. I think uh, I think we were pretty aware of that over on our side of the house. So it shouldn't be any surprises, but um, thanks Liddell for, for bringing that up. I don't know that the broader group would have been aware of that. All right, uh, so that's everybody's updates. Let's go ahead and grab on to uh, some of these topics. And just uh, a friendly reminder, if you have some top of mind uh, ideas that you'd like to see covered towards the end of the meeting, this section here at the bottom exists for that. So you can throw stuff in there and we'll pick it up as soon as we get done with our discussion about the topics that we're bringing directly to the group. Um, so uh, this may 
or may not, or I, I think potentially we have some overlap and coverage between this and the decentralized work group. So if this is being covered by the decentralized work group, um, just go ahead and give us that nod and we'll pass it over there and consider it an option for opportunity for the folks here to catch that update. But the question came up last week about uh, Saturn's options for uh, the passive bit swap peers, uh, specifically, uh, Will brought this discussion topic up. Um, is there a way to measure how much gateway content currently is not in the DHT indexers? So this is a, a question that we had uh, kind of proposed to Guy. I think we uh, pinned him with trying to figure this out. He's got a lot of work on his plate right now. I wanted to check, um, Masi or Ivan, can you help us to understand the context of solving this problem, what the priority is for Guy to provide us with this data? I also kind of asked Dennis uh, Troutwine to see if he could uh, potentially look into this as well. Uh, and we're going to meet with him this afternoon to talk about it, um, potentially if there's some measurement or capability here. So. Guy, I'll keep you up to date on that, but um, yep. from the indexer side of the house, we wanted to kind of confirm how much of a blocker this is for us, or if this just provides us with context to kind of proceed with our work. And I know Will brought this up, so if, if we don't have an immediate sense of that, we can always uh, circle back to him later. Okay. And do you know for when you need this information, approximately? Is it like a week, a month? Yeah, so um, that that's what I was hoping maybe Masi or uh, Ivan could help us with context on. And if you can't, we can always grab Will later. I think this might be related to the project RIA. Yeah. Uh, in terms of timeline, probably within a week, if that's possible. Uh, but okay. Will is the man to talk to. I think he has the most context about this one. Okay. Yeah, I think the thing that we probably need to clarify here is whether or not knowing this is essentially a blocker for the work that we're presently doing. I. I think I gathered from the last meeting that it was not, but let's get uh, clarification from them and ensure that potentially this will influence some of the design decisions that they're making over there um, or that we're making in the over world. There. Like there are, there are other options uh, available to us, right? The, the people who are relying on bit swap peering are, are like breaking the network. Like, or they're breaking user experiences. Like what this means is that if I go to IPFS.io, it might it'll load the page. And if I load it up in Brave, it will not load the page. So like the problem is that there's no if we surface the errors and what has occurred and why, that is also like a viable option here. Like there are ways we can hack around it and keep things going and like mimic the similarities to the way they are today. But at some point, I think the conversations that happen around like, should you be advertising in IPNI or the DHT? The reason they're not happening is because PL is papering over the, the things for them, right? And so, and then PL says, well, you should, could you please advertise your data for like the health of, you know, the rest of the ecosystem? This is actually, Adeen, this is really interesting because the other night I was, I kind of bounce between browsers when I'm testing stuff. And I explicitly noticed that exact scenario. I was loading the web page in Brave and it kept kind of, it was just incredibly slow. And I was trying to figure out why <laughs> this, this makes perfect sense. I totally get it. Um, this is actually something that I think probably I can take partial ownership of, uh, not gathering the data. So Guy, um, I think it'll be important to continue pursuing the data here, but also there's another aspect of this, which is getting um, other indexers online and kind of having a more distributed indexer approach that I think uh, affects us. And 
Uh, I frankly, I need to um, kind of sort out with folks like Pinata how they're running their indexer instance and see if we can um, potentially get them to follow the kind of the approach that we're taking here. So uh, I think there's kind of multiple, you're, you're right, solutions to this problem or multiple ways around it. Um, so Guy, the data will be helpful, but also um, we've got to work with these ecosystem contributors and, and try to get commitments from them to operate the network in a way that uh, actually benefits the network. That makes perfect sense. Thanks for sharing that, Adin. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. And so I'd say it's one of the things we want to do to set up this measurement infrastructure and get this number, but it's just not our first priority at the moment. So if you can wait, sure, we will provide the number. And otherwise, maybe we need to reschedule some stuff. Yeah, there are yeah. other ways you could go about the same thing too. So I know a number of groups have basically taken the the core of like the IPFS check utility and then wrapped it around something that targets their infrastructure. So like I think the dot storage folks have done this for like, oh, how many of these NFTs are like actually retrievable through our system? Um you could do that and then effectively run it against the list of like gateway URLs at a later time. Um, and that might be something that's like a little that you could hand off then to other groups like Pinato and they'd say, oh, okay, have we, we, we did this indexer thing. Does that mean our data is good yet? And you could say, well, if you run this tool against some fraction of your data, this is how you will tell what percentage of it is there, right? Um, and make that a little more, it's like making the tool for us that's also self-service for them when they start asking questions. That's an interesting idea. Um, I, I think I, mean, I think we have that tool already. If, if this is the verification thing, we have a CLI that uh, yeah, given a detached index or even an index provider would tell you which ones are retrieval from the contact or any indexer. Yeah, right. Like I, I know these tools are around because everyone's using them in some capacity. So we can just like right. point people at the right things. Totally. I think there's a definitely room for better documentation. So. That's a good call out, Bossy. Um, I'm going to tag you here just so you and I can uh, interface on that because I'd actually like to um, take that tool over to some of these folks so that they can actually see um, you know, what, what's happening to the network with their present implementation of indexing. That, that would be really beneficial to the discussions that I'm having with these community members. Um, now, given this discussion topic, Guy, um, I think Masi was right regarding kind of needing at least the immediate data like within the week. Is that reasonable that you'd be able to help out with that? Um, I'll have to check, so I, I won't do it, but I'll, have, I'll need to check maybe with Dennis or Jan if they can take this up. Cool. And yeah. I'll, I'll I'll follow up with Dennis uh, today. Okay. We've we kind of started the discussion, so I'll, I'll let you know how that goes once we've once we've caught up. Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay, we can uh, skip this second item. I think we've already essentially covered that. Um, and then uh, another item that I think we briefly mentioned, but uh, we didn't get to dive into was um, identifying the long carrying connections is what uh, Will called them. So um, basically connections that have been hard coded from our side and then um, peer IDs that uh, I think Adine mentioned, which have been hard coded to us and identify whether or not additional action should be taken. Um, this is independent of that uh, bit swap advertisement kind of peering breaking, right? But is it? I thought I thought it's related to the bit swap stuff. Okay, okay. I wanted to make sure that yeah, same same deal. Okay, okay. Um, those those descriptions kind of almost sound like a different problem entirely. So that's okay. We can yeah. There there's like there's maybe a side thing 
which is just about like, oh, are there peers that are longer lived connections that we should be keeping alive just for like some efficiency purposes? But that's not, that that's like, you know, Saturn or other people's problems for deciding how efficient they want to be with their connection usage and closing and opening. Um, and it's the difference between like a yes, no bit and like uh, how much CPU am I using kind of thing. That makes sense. We'll go ahead and leave that there just so the language permeates for anybody following along. Um, and then, so kind of a shift in gears, but uh, one thing we did bring up that I think we haven't got conclusive decision on or, or direction on right now uh, is double hashing support uh, in HTTP delegated routing. And uh, I think that might go the direction of, of Gus probably, um, if, if we have kind of a, a timeline in mind or uh, Ivan, I saw you thinking about jumping in. <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> no, no, no. So you asked perfectly valid question. So basically, yeah. So any uh, any timeline in mind and like what is going to be how it's how it's going to look like, or you haven't thought about it yet. And now is a good time to think about it if you haven't. <laughs> Guess can we uh, can we get you in there for that? Uh, I don't have anything. I, I don't have anything to add here. Uh, okay. I don't know. I, I like we obviously we need to like reevaluate what we're working on right now, and so I don't know where this fits in with everything else going on because uh, we haven't done that yet. Um, so, like, I, I can't give an ETA or anything on this because I don't know how it lines up with everything else. So, uh, would it be helpful if we take the first pass at it? Of a PR on IPAP. Yeah, definitely. Like getting yep. getting the the conversation started. Yeah, is definitely a good first step. That's what we do. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, awesome. I mean, if, if it was if it was me, I'd probably try and do the other things that bring us like up to par with some of with some of the areas with IP and I where there's like a little bit of a a dissonance. So one is like the which which routers am I targeting? So like an option, like basically HTTP options like Massey added in, uh, in the IPNI spec and then uh, in IPNS um, that will like basically alleviate a bunch of the, the friction behind should the IPNI thing be living here or living there kinds of problems. Yep, agreed. So the, the spec Plus those the exist double... on the network today, right? As opposed to double hashing, which doesn't exist on the network yet. <laughs> so specifically about double hashing, there's three moving parts here. One is the IPNI stuff. One is DHT, rolling out to DHT. I think DHT migration is sort of related. And then we have the um, delegated routing integration. Uh, so the main thing is to make sure all these systems work in harmony when we have the double hashing. Uh, so I guess for the delegated routing side, uh, we'll take the first pass as, at putting up uh, a um, specification, which would be very similar to basically how the IPNI works. And then we can get the conversations started to mature that. And then I guess we also need to push forward the, um, with uh, Guy's specification on double hashing itself on IPFS to begin with. So there's a few steps to go before we actually roll it out. Does that make sense? That does make sense. Sorry, just trying to catch up with the notes. Um, I think that's a, a good approach and I think it also addresses kind of the most immediate needs, uh, first, and, uh, we'll take a whack at it and then we'll, we'll follow up with you guys once we, um, 
get some some detail on paper to hopefully start that process. In regards yeah, sounds good. to prioritizing that against the uh, the remainder of the IPFS backlog, I think the best thing we can do is is try to kind of provide you with an understanding of what this might block essentially. Um, I, I think you probably already have a good understanding of that, but we'll, we'll try to frame it in that context such that uh, it helps with the prioritization discussion. We've been doing a, a lot of prioritization discussion lately on the IPNI team. And um, if, if you all wanna kind of talk about how we went about that, happy to share the results from it. I think it was a pretty constructive exercise and we've got a good method going that we're happy to um, review with y'all as well. Side note. Um, and then Mario, I think one thing that uh, kind of came up in the last meeting, I don't know that we need a, a decision here, but it, it's been kind of a, a lightly mentioned discussion topic that um, we should just kind of check in on and consider, which is uh, Bifrost potentially helping with the indexers, uh, having monitoring, uh, your CI, um, and Masi, that specifically we're thinking about like SID.contact, right? Yeah. yeah. I missed the beginning. Exploring how we can collaborate and help out with uh, keeping SID.contact up and running and CI monitoring and so on and so forth. By Bifrost pitching uh, pitching in the idea to help us run SID.contact and use their tool chain to support so, it potentially. Absolutely. To be completely fair, uh, we have no idea what the current state is. So, so then I'm just throwing right. this out there and see if we can how we can help. Came to the right place, Mario. You came to the right place. <laughs> um, uh, Mario, really appreciate it. So I can point you to how the service is running right now, if that's helpful. Um, the mm -hmm. monitoring we have in place, and of course, uh, we'll appreciate your eagle eye on anything that you think might be missing. Hammer, want to uh, collaborate? Um, want to uh, say something? Oh, I, think you, I think you summarized it nicely. I mean, uh, I guess uh, it was a different world the other week, and, and now we're having to look very closely at um, what obligations and things we can take on. But at the very least, I think um, it makes sense that we have uh, a lot of overlapping experience there and could um, definitely shed some eyes and, and help uh, point you in some right directions if there's anything that we can see there. I think, um, thanks Masi. I, I think that one thing I've recognized is from around the organization, there's kind of a couple groups who um, it, it seems presently would benefit from an actual in-depth review of the infra um, infrastructure supporting the current implementation of the indexer. This question has kind of come up a few times. This is a discussion that um, Dennis and I have been having as well. Um, what we may want to do is actually set up a um, kind of a deep dive with the different teams that are interested in this detail. Um, we've put together a bunch of blog posts. The indexer team is kind of uh, recently done, which describe in depth the behaviors of the indexer, but the infrastructure itself, I think is probably a little bit more mysterious to those outside of the team. And so um, let me, uh, with our team during our colo today, We'll kind of discuss how we might approach educating folks across our internal PL ecosystem about how the infrastructure works of the indexer. We may do it with a little bit of documentation, or we can potentially host a synchronous review meeting of some sort that uh, kind of gets everyone up to speed. But I think we have enough people asking for you know details about this that it would definitely suit everyone. So we'll brainstorm on that. That'll be our action item, and then we'll. Um, We'll kind of come back to this group with a proposal of how we'll how we'll support those requests. In the meantime, of course, uh, I hope everyone's in the uh, IPNI Slack channel, and uh, always you can uh, ask us questions there as well. We're super responsive there. 
Um, I guess the one the one thing I will add though is that all of our infrastructure is set up using the GitOps standard that that Bifrost uh, previously pushed through to other teams. So it is all infrastructure as code. It lives in store the index. There is a um, an ops deployment that has the Terraform and such that that then represents what our infrastructure is. So it is all there uh, in the repo as code uh, in the way that I believe we've, we've sort of recommended as best practice across PL. And the link to it is in Zoom chat. Let me just drop that here. Thanks, thanks, Will, for uh, kind of adding that flavor. I think that definitely probably clarifies. All right. So that covers all of our um, topics that we had initially set out to cover. Did we have any top of mind that popped up in the chat? I see the discussion going on about the uh, surprise results of the zero milliseconds. Um, do we want to um, bring that? Did we come to any conclusions in that discussion in the chat? Or um, is there anything we want to make sure everybody catches that came from it? Ah, I see the link to the data there. Let me just ensure that that's on our notes. If not, we may have wrapped our meeting early for the first time. About the zero latency making things worse, I guess what I'd like to understand is what's the next step? Because the, the result is a slightly surprising to me. And I, I'm curious what would happen if we delay the Bits up <laughs> rather than starting everything and you know at once. Say that again. You're curious of what? So I think the way it worked was there was a one second delay before we started lookup on DHD and then IP and I. So you want like a minus, just... you want a negative one second instead of uh, zero. Yeah. I'm curious yeah, so, what happened. So there. in order, right? So as I flagged in the other issue, there are two things that that need to happen if you're going to go just messing around with the number. But like probably you want to just do the thing better. So one is that th this this broadcast business, which is what you're doing, the one second like the delay about. Okay, broadcast. Just make sure we're on the same page. Broadcast should not need to exist at all. There are three reasons why broadcast exists, and we can fix them. Uh, the first is uh, our code does not use sessions properly in all of the places, right? Example, if I try and do a gateway request right now, uh, and this will show up with our with the rail work, and I'll probably make a PR today about this, but like the there are three different requests that will have three different sessions instead of one session all the way through. This is bad, right? Because the sessions are meant to tie together logical data segments and stop you from needing to do extraneous lookups, right? So one is if you're bad at doing sessions, then this bit swap thing, the broadcast helps fix it for you. Uh, the second is places where you're not gonna be using in, you know, indexers, DHTs, whatever, which is like MDNS on your local network. But we could like explicitly call that out. And if you have peering agreements with peers that are designed to give you peer IDs, that are designed to give you blocks, you could also explicitly call them out. Instead of spamming everyone you're connected to, you could spam like the pre-configured spammable targets, right? And like, that's basically it, right? Then you then you don't need to do the spammy bit the spammy broadcast anymore. And the reason why my my high suspicion as to why doing these low latency things hurts you is because we're just adding more spam on more spam and it's eating all of the CPU and it's choking the resources for the work you need to do, right? 
and you're spinning up in, you know, maybe the, maybe delaying bit swap would help, but the DHT is making connections, which are more CPU expensive generally than sending out messages on already formed connections. So basically just make it so we can turn off broadcasting <laughs> and then, and then you should make this go away. Also, our friends in Infura and Number Zero and all over the world will praise our names uh, or at least stop cursing them as much uh, if we do that. Does that, does that make sense to people? It does. Thanks, Eddie. So, but, uh, sorry. I just, so, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Gay. All right. So it's just so with Kubo 18, we've reduced the the number of directly connected peers. So we've massively reduced the broadcast. But still, the DH or I mean, yeah, DHT or IPNI are the fastest of both. But yeah, anyway, it's making a new DHT connection. Uh, seems to be slowing down, even though the 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 broadcast was like reduced by eight times. So um yeah, I, I'm not really sure what's the what's the reason here that it's still slower. I mean there I mean, there are other artifacts too. So like if you read the the link I posted, um yeah. there are things like we have artificial limits around how many DHT queries we'll do at once coming from within GoBitSwap. Right. And so if you start spamming them out and you have a worker queue of size eight, at some point you're going to choke the queue and that's going to slow everything else down. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I think I called out most of the things that I could think of in, in the issue there. I think this is a good document for review. I just want to confirm out of the parties that are present in this call, dealing with the design decision relative to how we would potentially replicate some type of session management more so than uh, broadcasting in these scenarios that you described, Dean. Who who ultimately does does that kind of decision making fall on, and you know how does it get folded into the framework? Is this an IPFS stewards type of um, thing to wrestle with, or is that something that? like a broader broader group weighs in on. I mean, if sessions are missing from somewhere where they should be, that's a bug. Anyone can file a bug or a PR and that's that's fine, right? Like there's no intentional reason why a command is spinning out three different sessions for what is one logical operation of like, fetch me this file. It, and and it, yeah, it's just it's just one of those accidents that happens when you can get away with it, which is being enabled by this like big fudge factor of the broadcast. Like it's like the broadcast heals all wounds at the cost of everybody's CPU and bandwidth and IO, right? Yeah, that's uh, that's a good point. I want to make sure to capture here. Like these are these are bugs that we're uncovering to some extent, right? So it's good. We're 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 pulling off the thing. We're discovering bugs. Now we get to go. Now we get to go fix the bugs. Awesome. Um, that's good stuff, Guy. <laughs> so I'd say the priority going forward wouldn't be to merge this pull request or to go on with the testing, but rather, um. Yeah, going on with fixing the bugs or making sure we don't need a broadcast anymore seems a more reasonable next step than merging this PR. I think everybody here probably agrees with that unless somebody feels differently, but that sounds pretty logical. Yeah, the, the only argument I could see someone making if they really wanted to try and like merge the PR was to say that uh, you know, it's unfair. Thunderdome does like a, a bajillion requests uh, and has many as many connections to many peers and such. I would be much happier if we tested this out on, you know, what is like effectively an IPFS companion node or something. 
um, yep. that's much smaller. And and maybe, and maybe, but then those those people really don't want you to eat up their CPU either. <laughs> so yeah. um, they'll be really sad. They'll just turn the whole thing off if it's like stopping them from watching their video, right? If the experimentation set up already for delay zero, would it be too much effort to do an experiment with delay minus one? I don't know if it sure works like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work with the implementation. It's not a one character change, is it? No. <laughs> yeah, so unfortunately, this is go bit swap is controlling how long it waits before doing that other call, but it doesn't have logic to wait on doing its swarm lookup, I think. But I think we could use Thunderdome to, so at the moment, the experiment was run with a uh, hundred requests per second. So hundred DSCAD requests. So we can try to make this number go down. So replicate exactly the same experiment. Um, let's say with only uh, uh, provide a search delay set to zero and compare 100 requests per second, 10 requests per second, one request per second, and see if there is some improvement. And if there isn't, then we can just go on. Is the reason I push for this is it seems to me like a high value thing. Uh, makes look up a lot easier for people. And we are nearly yeah. there. It's just hitting small walls. We can also try, like, if it's if it's a CPU bounded issue as opposed to like weird worker like go routine things, which probably should also be adjusted to account for the fact that IPNI and like the DHT are not the same thing in resource consumption. Like IPNI keeping keeping an HTTP connection open and just sending more requests down the pipe is like not that expensive in comparison to opening many many connections to many peers, right? Um, so th this is just like additional logic that needs to happen. I I'm sure at some level, the folks working on last year are going to have some fun futzing around with the same kind of stuff. Um, but this is like the kind of session management and like taking into account that we're dealing with multi-protocol systems that each have different characteristics for us to account for. And we're like, because there was a handy interface, we like wrapped them in the same place, but but they're not the same thing. But I think we can define a different provider search delay for IPNI and the DHT. So we could set it to zero for, for IPNI example, and keep yeah. it to one second for the DHT. Yeah, that sounds like a thing we could totally test and you'd see like, oh, okay, there's not much extra CPU load and so things look better, right? Yeah. And and that might be worth testing at like as an easy way to test this hypothesis that it's connection opening from the DHT getting throttled. Um, yeah. Also, hopefully, the we start to close off more of the sessions, like the improperly plumbed sessions issues, as a function of needing the, to do that anyway for the rail work, because like, well, it has a block store that wants to be based on sessions, <laughs> effectively context, and so we're going to need to do. We have to do this anyway. Um, All right, good topic. Does anybody else have anything top of mind? This was the only big discussion that I saw in the chat. So um, now's your chance before we drop off. Well, just since I have a Dean and, and Lytle here, I made a PR on IPFS website that will hopefully fix that JS redirect thing. I've been... I've been uh, yeah, up for a while since I last looked at this, but um, I'm just looking at like the double hash DHT stuff, um, which has some like keying based on peer IDs, but the peer ID is like for anything we do with like HTTP based records, like peer IDs kind of won't exist, right? And so I'm wondering if there's any thought for how that plays into the rest of this. Or if that's like TBD, we'll we'll do it when the records show up. You mean adding privacy for the peer IDs? 
no i mean the fact that like so right now it takes like two or three round trips to like get to do my lookup with the ipni reader privacy specification and part of that is because i'm protecting like peer info and then i'm using some of the peer info to protect other metadata and like it seems like that's like a little bit coupled to the existence of like a peer id so, so if if the if, if you're talking about the http retrieval mechanism which would get baked into metadata in ipni then you effectively remove one of the round trips because what you get back is you get back a key which you can then retrieve the metadata that gives you directly the http address you're looking for so i I think we can make it work such that it's not dependent on PID. PID is not special; it's just part of a key. And is the context? I guess the ID... other thing is, get... yeah. Go ahead. Why, why don't we propose what the integrate what it looks like in delegated routing? Part of part of the reason we've got um, the structure we have is so that we remain compatible with DHT records, so that we can import them in. Um, but I think we believe that the integration with Kubo should in most common cases not take additional round trips. And that there's both between local caching uh, and then the sort of generalized key usage, um, we can make things reasonably okay. Yeah, I mean, in the short term, like it's only one extra round trip instead of two because BitSwap doesn't need metadata. But if we start adding in protocols that do need metadata, which you know people have lots of good ideas, um, then then we're going to eat one more and i you know we don't have to do it now but i'm wondering given that it's gonna it might mess with how you guys do indices if we should try and reduce the reduce the number of round trips we have to do to an ipni instance what would http look up http retrieval look like over um providers found Sorry, which providers uh, retrieve from DHT? Well, because oh, okay. that really is the problem, right? Uh, shrug. I mean, if the DHT doesn't support them, they don't have to, right? You guys are a different system. You're like not the same as them, right? I see what you're saying. Uh, let me think about this, Eddie. This is a good one. Like it, some some examples of like you know hacky approaches to this are. Uh, Will had one hacky approach. I had a different hacky approach that both involved like shoving, shoving stuff either into multi adders that were a little weird or shoving stuff into the metadata and using that. Um, you know, kind of whatever works. It's a key value store. Um, just trying to figure like, yeah, how we how we want to start exposing that to people. You know, is the way that I'm a, I've my example abuse metadata abuse or just regular use. And do we want that to take an extra round trip as a penalty, or is that like, a, oh no, we actually wanted that to be fast? I don't know. I think this will be a good topic to bring to our our next content routing work group. We'll we'll iterate on it. Um, another item that I had missed in the chat, but I just noticed, was a request from Mossy to. Um, see if we had an ETA on merging IP IP 337. I think yeah, that one's Yeah, yeah, I'd say like by the end of the week, because there's like a queue with this one. And also we got uh, at least three for the gateways. It's just uh, uh, all the other stuff had to take a priority. But I want to land it before the end of the week, because we already shipped a bunch of those IPs in Kubo 18. And this one uh, will be part of the batch as well, I think. Just need to look, you know, do the final look, uh, tweak any editorials, and, and then most likely merge it this week. Awesome. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. All right, y'all. Well, that summarizes our meeting, unless anybody has any other hot burning topics they want to have covered while you got the group here. Uh, speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> if not, thanks everyone for sharing all of your constructive and beneficial opinions on all these topics. Super helpful. I appreciate every week when everybody comes here. 
Uh, we'll see you in two weeks or online, of course. Take care, everybody.